Right, if you want to get the most out of your Raspberry Pi experience with XBMC, you're going to want to install it to a USB 3.0 stick. So uh, let's go through just how simple it is to install OpenELEC to a USB. Um, what you're going to need is a couple of files that are linked to in the video description. There's going to be a link for Partition Wizard and the OpenELEC SD card files. So uh, Partition Wizard, let's just quickly install that. Yeah, you can just next, 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 okay all of that and install. It doesn't install any bloatware or anything like that. And um, and you also want your SD card and USB stick plugged in at this stage. So we're going to launch that and go into Mini Tool Partition Wizard. And this will bring up all the different um, hard drives that you have installed currently. So, um, so this one here, that one there, is my SD card and as you can see I've got four partitions on there it's just full of rubbish um, I don't even know what I've got going on on that to be quite honest I think it may have been Raspberry MC I'm not 100% but um, so I've got that one there and I've got my USB stick is this one here it's a brand new store and go um, it's an 8 gig verbatim store and go USB 3.0 which I can confirm as working excellent um, so what we would need to do is click on the little um, icon here, the hard drive icon, right click and delete all partitions. So click yes. And I know I said that's a brand new stick and you'd think, well, why are you going bothering doing that? But um, it doesn't matter if it's a new stick or not. Quite often they do put on a sneaky little partition that um, is pretty much invisible. Um, and really you just want to get rid of all that so uh, you want it to be uh, completely fresh and on the SD card I'm going to do exactly the same so right click and delete all partitions yes uh, now we have to click on apply and it'll take a matter of seconds so click yes and there we go that's all done so they're completely deleted and they're blank so the SD card what I'm going to do here is uh, click on the unallocated space and we just need to create a new um, section, new partition. Uh, this needs to be uh, FAT32, it needs to be primary and partition label we want that as system in capitals and give it a drive letter as well so we're going to call it, uh, we're going to give it the drive letter H and just make sure it's all filled up um, you know uh, and it all looks good so that does it looks like we're not having any spare space left over so okay that and this one down here which is the USB stick I'm going to create a partition there now this one it must be x4 ext4 and again it must be primary and the partition label you want that as storage in capital letters okay and again just make sure that you're using up all, all the space that you can use and um, and okay that uh, I have had a couple of occasions whereby um, on the SD card it was greyed out where it said uh, make it uh, primary um, I shouldn't worry too much about that but if you do find that your SD card just simply isn't working and your Pi isn't booting up, you just get a blank screen. Um, try using Raspberry MC installer and that has a little function in there, a little tick box you can tick to restore the um, device so that you can use it again on um, on Windows system. So just tick that, let Raspberry MC do its thing, it takes like a couple of seconds uh, and then format as usual in Windows uh, as FAT32 but, uh, but that's only if you have a problem doing it this method. So, uh, so anyway, we're all good now. So that's ext4. That's the FAT32. We just need to apply that now, and um, we click yes. And that's just going to take a little while now, as um, as it's a eight gig USB stick. It does take a little while just to format to ext4. So I'm just going to pause that for a moment. Right, that's complete now. So uh, let's OK that. We can close this tool now. That's the last we need of that. Um, all we need to do now is with the file that you downloaded for the SD card, the open link to USB, we need to extract that somewhere on our computer. So I'm just going to chuck that there. And um, then what we need to do is open that folder and copy all of this contents 
onto the SD card. So uh, let's go to computer. Where's my SD card? That one there called system. And I'm going to paste it on there. And literally, um, once that's done, you take it out and pop it in the Raspberry Pi and, um, and watch it boot up into OpenLX. So let's, uh, let's see that in action. Right, so I'm just plugging in the Raspberry Pi now and it should come up with the OpenLX screen straight away and in the top left corner hopefully it'll tell us what build version it's running and this is 3.2.2 there you go so at the time of uh, doing this video that's the most current version and um, if you do want to update um, OpenLEC has the facility to auto update from within the XBMC system these days so uh, so it's not a big problem not a big problem at all and I'll show you how to do that in a moment so um, after the XBMC splash logo it should come straight into the main menu which we have here and um, and just wait a few seconds for a little menu to come up it's the initial uh, boot menu which just asks you for some uh, random sort of settings in OpenELEC so uh, we're just going to whiz through that because uh, we don't really need to change anything there but if you uh, if you do just change uh, change whatever you need to change so uh, that's that and let's see how responsive it is um, you know, as you can see here, it's it's very responsive. We can whiz around, no problem. And that's on um, turbo overclock, by the way. So, uh, and it's a little slower than usual because, as you can see in the bottom right corner, it's just um, updating some add-ons that need updating. So, uh, so that's why it's slightly slower than usual. So let's uh, go to the OpenELEC settings anyway. And you'll see on the right hand side, uh, we've got automatic updates. You can set that to manual or auto. And... Um, Show update notifications so that will notify you in the system if there is an update and if you click check for updates now it will bring up a box to let you know if there is a new update. If there is one it just ask if you want to install it, click yes and it will um, go through and um, just do the process for you and that's it.